All right, problem 26, we have a region R that's the base of a solid where we're told that f of x is always going to be greater than g of x from the interval a to b. And for this solid, each cross section perpendicular to the x axis are rectangles, with the height five times the base. Which is the following integrals give the gives the volume of the solid. Okay, so these ones I always would like to... um. Draw a sketch at least, try to draw one. So let's see if I can do it. It tends to help my students. So let's let this will be the y-axis and this will be the x-axis. So we have a third dimension. We don't get into that really in, until vector calculus, but here we're gonna have a three-dimensional solid where let's just say that to keep it simple, um let's go and have f of x be like that. Again, it just has to be greater than g of x. And g of x is, you know, just like this. This is g, and that's f. And then um, what's going on is that you have, you have this rectangle, or you have this, you have this, well, you have these rectangles, I guess, but here's the base of the rectangle. Let me try to make them. So this represents the length of the base. So let's do this. Remember, so we have rectangles. This is going to be, let's say that's the base or B. And then it says you have heights coming out. That's five times the length of this. So this will be H or this will be, no, oh, this will be H. Let's just leave it as H, but an H is equal to five B. And so what's actually going on here, if you're able to visualize this, are like 3D prisms coming, like in that sort of fashion, yep. It's, it's not necessary, you have to visualize it like that, but, um, and actually, no, I drew this wrong. It should be more like this, actually. Oh, this is difficult. There we go, but that makes a little more sense. This is not one of my best drawings, I'll admit. So this link is, will be the height. And this will be the base, and you have these rectangles popping up. Um, don't obsess with this too much, because all you really need to, to understand is the formula for one of these rectangles, it's going to be an accumulation and I'll make usually some weird, you know, um, shape. But if we can understand this relationship, then it's pretty simple. So B, the base, is going to be the difference of F and G, or B will just be F minus G, because F is greater than G. So it's just that we have B is equal to F minus G. And then since the height is 5b, this is just 5 times f minus g. So the area of each of these rectangles, remember the area of a rectangle is base times height, or b times h. In this case, the area will just be f minus g times 5 times f minus g. And this is what you're integrating. So the, the volume of this is the integral from A to B of this expression of F minus G times five times F minus G. So the base times the height, which is just gonna be F minus G squared times five, or we can write five times F minus G squared. And of course, you have to make sure it be technically correct. All that f of, f of x minus g of x dx, all that. But um, the main thing is you understand this. Once you got that, it's not too bad. And so then, our answer will just be d. This is going to be d. That's all there is to it.
Wait, hold on. No, sorry. What did I do wrong? No, I'm sorry. It is right. I... <sighs> sorry about this bad drawing, but it's D. The answer is D. I, I, I thought I saw like a 25 there. Um, so let's look at the next one. I promise to make sure to draw my future solids better. So please give me another chance next time. Anyways, so 27. dy dx is x over y. And if y equals 4, and when x equals 2, then y equals. OK, so this is giving us a, a, an equation that describes the, the how they're related to each other in, in terms of their rate of change. So we want to find an expression for y or an equation for y or an equation for x. Doesn't really matter. Um, however, we want to look at it. But let's look for an, e an equation for y. So we're going to use integration. So we're going to bring the y's to the left. So we have y times y dy on the left, and then bring the dx to the right. Let me get this out of here. And then we integrate each side. After we integrate, we'll have y squared over 2 is equal to x squared over 2 plus our constant c. And let's solve for our constant c. We're given that when x is 2, or we're given that when, if y is 4, that, when, that y is 4 when x is 2. So when y is 4, we have 16 over 2 is equal to 2 squared, or 4 over 2, plus c. So we have 8 equals 2 plus c. So then we know that c equals 6. So we go back to this guy, and we have that y squared over 2 is equal to x squared over 2 plus 6. Now we just solve this for y. Multiply everything by 2. We get y squared is equal to x squared plus 12. And then we just square root it, and we get y is equal to the square root of x squared plus 12. And so the answer will be ED. Paper is giving me a hard time. All right, 28. Okay, so we have to just find the derivative of this function. So this is really, you can use the quotient rule, or I hate, I don't like using a quotient rule for whatever reason, but um, you can just straight up do that and and, you know, make sure you just don't screw up on any um, you know, little details, but for, for this, I would actually just rewrite this as f of x equals it's x squared over 3x. That would just be x over 3 plus 1 over 3x, which is just 1 third x plus 1 third x to negative 1. I like working with this. For, I usually feel more confident taking the derivative when it's like this. So then f prime of x would just be 1 third minus one third times x to the negative two. And then we just look, we just, I guess, clean it up and make it, you know, into one fraction, one group. So then combining these, this is the same. This is one over three x squared. So we need to multiply this by x squared over x squared. So we have x squared over three x squared minus 1 over 3x squared and so we have then just x squared minus 1 over 3x squared and it looks like they had a 
they probably did this with quotient rule and they had that they didn't factor out their three. So let's see, we can go and multiply everything here by three. And then we would get, um, it's like, it looks like we would get A. Actually, no, it looks like we would get, sorry, if I multiply this by, let me just multiply everything by three here. So, so multiplying everything by three, we get three X squared minus three over nine X squared. So it looks like we want to get that nine X squared in the denominator. So, oh, it's B. That was a noisy when they have answers like that, um, especially for the implicit differentiation problems, but just be prepared because they'll there's usually gonna be one or two of those. All right, 29. Move this camera. Okay, here we got a cool looking integral that you will usually scare you if you try to just straight up and do it with you know, antiderivatives. So we're gonna use u substitution because if we make u equal to x squared plus three x, du will be two x plus three dx, which is what we have exactly there. So then this integral just becomes u to the fourth because this just replaces that du. Uh, not, not two difficult at all because we just integrate this u to the fifth over five plus c plug in our resubstitute our u we just have one fifth times x squared plus three x to the fifth power plus c and our answer will be a All right, final one from the multiple choice section. So we have two differentiable functions, f and g, that have the property that f is always bigger than g of x for the entire interval um, from x to one for this closure. It's, it's gonna make a region that's bounded so here are just some of the values. So we basically have to find the area between the curves. And since we're not given any um, hint to what the function equation could be, we're gonna use the right Riemann sum to get an estimate. And that's essentially is using rectangles. Rectangles are we're gonna use the top right corner to get an estimate of the area. I like these ones. Um, and I always advise my, stu my students not to just don't memorize these, just visualize them or just draw the picture because it, it's really just simple geometry. So what I mean by that, let's break this up. So we have one, four, six, seven. The so one, four, six, seven. So we have four rectangles. No, three rectangles, one, two, three. And each of these have, you know, a top and bottom. And the idea is just to understand what the height of each rectangle would be. So, for example, we want to basically, let me do a little side picture. You're estimating, when it says right hand, it means you're going to use rectangles where you use a top right corner to be the height. And you, then you find the area by using these areas with the top right of the height. So the top right for the first one, we're going to be talking about this. And the height will be the difference between F and G, but F is bigger, so it's gonna be five minus one. So our, I'm worried if I draw a picture, it may look, actually let me go for this. So it's, this will be, this will be um, four one, because that's gonna be G, and here will be 
four five. That'll be F. And then you put F in red. At six, G is zero. So we have a point six zero. But F is two. So we have a point six two. And at seven, G is five. We we have a point seven five. But um F is eight. So we have another point seven eight. So what we're essentially doing is finding areas of these rectangles with these heights here. And from you just basically draw them like like they're like that. The area is just the sum of these three rectangles. Remember, it's length times width. So the area of each of these rectangles is length times width. So the width of this is three. And the, or the height of this, length times width, or the height of this is four, because five to one is four. The second one has a width of two, because four to six is two. And the height of this is two as well. And then for the last one, the width is just going to be one, because we're going from six to one, or six to seven. So we just have one, and the height is three. So again, think of width, or maybe let me do width times height. Width times height. You're adding the, the sum of the three widths times heights because you have three rectangles. So it's really just going to be 12 plus 4 plus 3, 16. So it'll just be 19 units squared. We just have 19, so the answer will be B. Now I sometimes wonder if I if I feel if I make this harder for old, you know maybe feel, they'll be like oh that's a lot of work what do you have to do this no I you don't know how you do not have to do this um, don't feel like you do if you understand this stuff fine it's great if you don't I just I just always advise my students to make sure you understand this I, idea before when you're approaching these problems because you don't want to fall into just like that rule where you have like um, like the trapezoid rule, the sum of because because it's because it's going to be just a um, a tedious calculation to you, and if you're not visualizing it, you um don't really know if, if you are anywhere near the right answer or the wrong answer. Like you could be you could be doing one simple mistake, and it could be completely wrong. Um, so yeah, this is the long way, but I'm just teaching it to you, so don't feel you need to um, do it this way. Um, but but of course, please give me feedback. Let me know this helps if it doesn't help um and let me know if you have any questions and of course if these help you subscribe and i know i should should still then keep on making these videos pumping them out and um i'll see you guys in the next video where i'm going to start doing the calculator based multiple choice questions